Good morning to you. I am Mark Suddeth, and here's what's up in the tropics for Friday, the 16th of September, 2022. The Atlantic Basin, fairly busy right now. We have Fiona, and then a couple of other areas out here that could develop over the coming days. Even if they do, they will remain well out to sea. We can see that here on the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Fiona will continue to be the biggest story, it does look like. But again, there's a couple of other areas that we will keep an eye on as the tropics continue to try to make up for lost time in the Atlantic Basin. In the East Pacific, we do have Lester now that has developed here to the south of the Mexican coastline, and then another area off to its west that could develop as well in the coming days. The track map here, there is Lester expected to make landfall in southern Mexico over the next day or two. That could bring the threat of some very heavy rainfall. And then over here, of course, to the east, we have Fiona. And if we zoom in on that track map, forecast to pass into the Northeast Caribbean. It has been tracking to the south and west of the official forecast track by just a little bit over the last day or so. And that has made the future forecast track become a little bit more to the south here. And uh, remember, though, it is not a little black dot with an S in it. The storm is much larger than that. That's just where the center of circulation is forecast to be. Over the next five days, there will be squally conditions, locally rough seas, and the possibility of significant rainfall and flooding for some of these islands, especially Puerto Rico, and eventually the Dominican Republic, and possibly even Haiti as well. And eventually Fiona should end up in the Southwest Atlantic, potentially in the Turks and Caicos. We will watch that as it evolves. A very complex pattern coming up regarding this situation for sure. Satellite animation, there's our activity in the Pacific. Not much going on in the Gulf or the Caribbean, and so our attention will focus mainly on Fiona, which is right there. And then there's that one system up there off the coast of North Carolina. It'll continue to move on out into the Atlantic. And even if it does develop more, it really won't be a problem except of interest to shipping and marine interest out there. All right, so here is the visible satellite animation, just the the first few frames coming in after sunrise here, and you can see that Fiona is still generally decoupled from the deep thunderstorm activity, meaning that it is not, it is not very well organized. Uh, nevertheless, it is certainly still there, tracking along at a fairly good clip to the west, and we will watch and see, does that shear relax and allow more thunderstorms to wrap around? If that happens, it can not only, of course, change the intensity outlook, but also the track, because a more intense, larger storm in the atmosphere would tend to track more north towards a weakness that should develop in the Bermuda High and the Western Atlantic Ridge, as we call it. A weaker storm would generally track more to the west, something we will definitely be watching in the coming days. Just a real quick look here at the key messages. Again, it's all about the impacts, and even though it's a fairly disorganized tropical storm, as it moves into the Northeast Caribbean, the possibility of tropical storm conditions, gusty winds, like I said, locally rough seas, and very importantly here, the potential for some significant flood impacts definitely coming with Fiona. So let's take that very seriously, especially Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and even the other smaller islands there, St. John, St. Thomas, Guadalupe, Antigua, you name it, Barbuda, St. Bart's, all of those areas, St. Martin, and everything in between, this is, you know, not the worst thing. Obviously, it's not an Irma, but it is something you need to take seriously as it's moving through, uh, especially from that uh, urban and localized flooding uh, caused by those very heavy rains. And then, as it passes over Hispaniola, we'll deal with where it could end up in the next several days later with my hurricane outlook and discussion this afternoon. There's just too much chaos in the model guidance to really get into it this morning. So we'll take a look at that in more detail after the 12Z guidance comes in. I'll look at that in greater detail this afternoon, again, on the hurricane outlook and discussion. All right, that is it for me for this morning. As always, thanks for tuning in to What's Up in the Tropics. I'll be back with you in a few hours.